Hi, everyone. Welcome to session 10 of Project Management Professional Training Series. So in session 10, we are uh, going to do a continuation of session nine. Uh, so in session nine, we uh, went through how to develop the schedule. And in that we went through uh, the process of activities and durations, uh, then placing the activities in sequence and in parallel. And we found out uh, you know, the entire, uh, uh, the float of the activities with the help of uh, the forward pass and the backward pass, right? Now, one important step which is left in the network diagram is that we can find out a very important component in the schedule called critical path. And lesson 10, we are going to dive deep into critical path. We are going to find out what exactly is critical path and how to find it. Now, as a immediate uh, in a sequence to session 10, uh, we will go to session 11. And in that, I will uh, you know, request you to do like back, like do this two sessions back to back 10 and 11, because in 11, we are going to go through uh, how few of the questions in the exams uh, can be for critical path and for the schedule calculations and how you can do them uh, in a nice and quick way and grab those marks. So the entire you know, schedule, if you look into that, right from the activity till critical path, it's all mathematics, right? And so it's very simple and easy uh, to grab the marks in the exam because in maths, you get a very binary kind of answer, right? You, you, you don't, don't have to guess the best answer or you don't have to uh, you know, probably go through all the four options and find out. Uh, in maths, it's simple. Once you know it's a mathematical question, you solve it in a piece of paper and you look at the answer, you find that A, B, C, D, whichever it is, so you click on that and that's it, right? You grab the marks. It's simple and it can be done in a very fast way. Um, the aim is that all the mathematical questions in the exam has to be done correctly and in the fastest possible way. So in that way, you grab the marks and you save more time for the more critical use cases where you have to read the entire use case and then you have to probably find out what is the best case because two of them will be very close to each other and then you have to take off all the three and find out that best out of the four, right? Okay, coming back to critical path. So critical path, let's first of all talk about the definition. But before even getting into the definition, I will say that this is one of the most uh, misinterpreted and mispronounced words, uh, or rather, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, wrongly said by most of the PMs and the program managers. You will uh, you join a meeting of of a junior project manager to a to a program manager. You might hear this, uh, you know, statements a lot. Okay, this component is falling, or this activity is falling in the critical path, right? And uh, most of the time, it will not be true because critical path is the path which has to be developed mathematically. Like all the PM tools, they will be having their, this you know, one click button to find out the critical path between the activities, right? Uh, now, once you find the critical path, then the items which are falling on that path, they are only the items which are falling on the critical path. But people who are not knowing the mathematics behind it, or they don't know how to calculate it, or probably they have not gone through PMP training or PMP certification, they will be, uh, in, you know, speaking the critical path in the fashion of a, uh, uh, of a common, like a literal meaning of the English word, critical path. So whatever they think is critical, they will say, this is critical, uh, or this is falling in the critical path of the project, which is absolutely wrong, okay? Now, you may also ask me that, okay, if we can find out so easily, by the click of a button, a critical path, let's say a project management tool like MS Project, then why do we bother to uh, know how to calculate it, right? Uh, the answer is that, see, uh, if you have given any of the networking exams, let's say a CCNA, you will be getting a good amount of questions on how to calculate the subnet and so on and so forth. Though we know that there are excellent subnet calculators uh, for a very long time. However, a network engineer who is CCNA certified uh, is expected to know that they can look into a range of IP and they can find out the subnet like, depending on the number of hosts needed or number of networks. Okay, similarly, a person who is PMP certified or aspiring to be a PM, uh, like a PMP, uh, it's expected that they will be knowing how to manually calculate a complete network diagram and how to manually calculate a critical path or CP. Okay, the definition first. The definition is very confusing. Trust me, guys, this is one of the most confusing you know, definitions I have 
learned in PM or in PMP. Uh, let's go through it quickly, then probably we can try to make it easy. So the definition says that longest duration path in a project and determines the shortest time it could take to complete the project. You're like, what? It says longest duration path and it again says shortest time. How that, I mean, don't this sound very contradictory, like self-contradictory? How, how can you get a path of longest duration and can be of shortest time as well? So let's read it slowly and try to find out the exact meaning what it tries to say, okay? First of all, it says that the longest duration path in a project, which basically is if you have got, let's say three activities in one line, okay? And they are going to going from start till end, the activities, each of them take like 10, 10, uh, 10 days each, like 30 days uh, to complete or to go through that path to the end. And you have got one more stream of, uh, of activities like, uh, you know, A, B, C, D, and each of them are taking probably 10, 10, 10, 10 days, like 40 days time to reach. Okay. So you will choose the path which is having the longest duration like the day like the path which is having the 40 days timeline right so that is one thing so that is 40 days timeline so that is one part of the definition says that the longest duration path is the is the critical path and it also says and it determines the shortest time it could take to complete the project now shortest time means that you are not having any buffer on that path there is no kind of padding or gold plating or extra time being given on that. There is, I mean, the early start and the late start, they both will be same for that, right? And you cannot start that activity by even one day delay or by even half day delay. If you do that, then it will be impacting your day one. So that's why we say the shortest time, it means zero float. Basically, no float at all. So longest path is the duration wise, it is the longest. And again, time-wise, there is no buffer on that, okay? And that is why it's called the critical path. Now, probably you're getting the point that why things are called on a, or or are to be focused in a very high priority when they are falling on the critical path. Why? Because there is no late start for them. There is no float for them. There is no buffer for them. If you delay a critical task component, even by half day, forget about one day, then also you're going to hit the day one. And that is why it is called a critical path component, which has to be focused with high intensity. Now that is very practical approach for a program manager. Let's say a program manager is dealing with 20 uh, programs at one time. And each of these programs can have like several verticals to them. Uh, okay, uh, and, and like think about your, uh, you know, CIS, like your day one program, right? It's got so many verticals on that. Now, as a program manager, it will be very difficult for you to track each and every task and activity on that program. Now think, if you get a critical path drawn, okay, with the help of your work front or any other, uh, you know, uh, like uh, a PM tool, then it's so easy for you to just look into that critical path. So program managers normally and by standard practice, they should be looking into the critical path component. They should be looking into the critical path always, right? And focusing was the critical path achieved as per the planned timelines. If not, then they should be worried and they should be asking their PMs like, what is the mitigation plan? What are you doing uh, to ensure that we are back on track for the project? Because if you're hitting the critical path, then definitely we are going to impact the day one. Okay, so that is all about the critical path. Now, there are other beautiful mathematical things which we will uh, speak about once we finish cost. So one of them is called uh, SPI, okay? Uh, and SPI stands for the Scheduled Performance Index. I will just give you a glimpse here and then we will go into the critical path because these are the things which you have to know and these are the mathematical things and these are the stuff which a program ma manager should always focus into a program. Now, critical path is something which I said, the path which is having the longest duration and it's having no float or zero float. And how do you also know that your program is uh, either uh, going forward as per the schedule, like it's on the schedule or behind the schedule or better, it is ahead of the schedule, 
right? It can be on the schedule or it, it can be ahead of the schedule, which is very positive, or it can be behind the schedule as well. Now, how do you know that? Do you go into your uh, PM tool and look into all the items and check out which items are late tasks, behind tasks? That is one way of doing that, okay? That is one way of doing that. The other way is that every PM tool will be having a very nice feature auto built in, and that feature is called finding out the performance index of a project or program. And that can be done with the help of a help of the buttons called SPI or CPI. And we'll talk about that in detail. Generally, a standard program manager should be focusing on SPI value, CPI value, and have a look into the critical path. Okay, so let's talk about critical path. Now, how do we calculate the critical path? So again, just a little bit of flashback of what we did in the last you know, session, the session nine, where we spoke about how do we develop the network diagram with the help of the forward pass and the backward pass. So here are all the activities. I will take you a, a quick go through because we already have covered that in detail in the last session. Just a quick recap of that. So let's say we have got uh, these activities which are A, B, C, G, and D, E, F. And let's see if the durations are 20, 30, 15 and 10 days for each of them. And then we have got 20, 15 and 10 days for DEF. Okay. Now, if I do the forward pass, so I start from the left hand side of A and I say early start is zero. So uh, the, the, the early finish will be zero plus 20, which is 20. Then again, the early start for the next item will be starting from 20 and the early finish will be 50. We have spoken about all this in the lesson nine, right? So let's go fast. So we are coming to 50 and 65 and 65 plus 10, 75. Similarly, we are going here, zero to 20 is 20 and 20 plus 15 is 35. And for the activity F, it is 35 plus 10 is 45, right? That is forward pass. Again, we have to do the backward pass, uh, which we are starting from uh, the right to left now. So looking at the activity G, I pick up 75 as the late finish which should tally with the early finish. And then I'm minusing out the uh, 10 days here, the, the, the duration of the activity G and we are getting 65 as the early or sorry, the late start, right? Again, the late finish will be starting from 65 and minus 15 is 50, that is the uh, late start, okay? So we are getting the late finish like this, like 50 and 50 minus 10 is 40 as the late start. Again, late finish is 40, 40 minus 15, 25. 25 is the late start. Uh, late finish for D is 25 and 25 minus 20 is five. So five is the uh, late start for activity D. Similarly for activity B and A, we have got the calculations. 50 minus uh, 30 is 20 and 20 minus 20 is zero. Now, if you look at uh, the, uh, the middle, uh, like the float, the float, uh, or the slack or the buffer, the definition or the calculation is either late start minus early start or late finish minus early finish. So the buffer for activity E, uh, D, E, and F, these three uh, you know, activities, they will be uh, actually five because five minus zero is five. Again, 25 minus 20 is five and 40 minus 35 is five, right? So they have got a float there. And if you look into the activities like A, B, C, G, they are not having uh, any float. Zero minus zero is zero, 20 minus 20 is zero, 30, 50 minus 50 is zero and all that. So now let's talk about how to get the critical path. So critical path is, you will look that the path which is green in color, I have marked that path as the critical path. Now, let's see why. So we have got two paths here to uh, reach from start to end, right? Uh, and, and these are not like two separate paths. They all have to be done in the project. So A, B, then C, D, E, F, G. These all are the components of the projects and you have to complete all of them to reach from start to end. Okay, don't think that you only have to do uh, the path marked in green to reach from start to end, right? So these are all the components of the project, but the critical path out of all the components is the path which is having the longest duration. So the first point. So first point, if you look, the duration of A, B, C, G is 20 plus 30, 50 plus 15, 65 plus 10, 75, right? Similarly, for the other path, which is D, E, F, uh, C, G, that is 20, plus 15, that is 35, plus 10, 45, plus 15, 60, and plus 10 is 70. So DEFCG, it, it, it is being striked off from the longest duration path. So the longest path here is uh, ABCG, 
Now, that's the first criteria. The second one is, is the shortest time there? Yes, the time is also shortest for this path because this path is not having any float at all, no buffer at all. See, it is zero float here. Again, zero, zero, zero. And the float, the definition is uh, uh, late start minus early start with zero minus zero or late finish minus early finish, which is 20 minus 20. Okay. Now, since this all is a zero, uh, this complete path is the critical path. So we are having the longest duration path along with the shortest time it takes to complete that. So as a program manager, you may be having 20 paths in a project, right? 20 paths may be a very big project with a lot of components, but you have to focus on the critical path. And the question that you you you, you should ask or to your to your uh, team members or to your PMs in a daily standup is that, hey, uh, what is the status of the critical path? Uh, I see uh, the item B, the completion date was this, has it been completed? Because you are completely focused on the critical path. You're not focused too much on the other items because any which ways they have got a buffer with them, okay? You are dealing with the critical path. So that is one way. The other way to tackle is that you will be asking your team on the daily standup, hey, what is the SPI of the program, which we are going to talk about in detail later on. Okay, so that's the calculation of the critical path. And uh, like I said, in the lesson 11, I will be sharing with you at least two or three uh, numericals uh, and we'll solve them in a together to ensure that you understand the concept of calculating the critical path and how to tackle uh, those questions in the exam and get the full marks there. Okay, certain quick facts on critical path. Let's see. First of all, how much float does the critical path have? Easy question, right? Uh, these kind of direct questions will not come in the exam, but you must be knowing all this, uh, you know, facts because they will help you to find out the correct answer. So critical path always know that it's got a zero total float. There is no float on a critical path. And that's why it's called a critical path. Okay. Can there be a negative float on a critical path? Okay, we are talking about no positive float, fine. But can there be a negative buffer on a critical path? Uh, negative float can be there. And negative float on any activity means that the activity is behind schedule. Okay, it's a very tricky question. I personally haven't seen any exam questions are having a negative float or something, but always know that negative float is possible, which means the activity is behind schedule. Positive float is not possible on a critical path at all. And the last one, can there be more than one critical path? So there is one concept called near critical path. So your critical path, the duration can be 70 hours and your near critical path can be 69 hours. So that kind of path can exist. And both the paths can have uh, you know, zero float, but still you have to choose the one uh, you know, where uh, the duration is higher. But the point is, if there is more than one critical path, let's say there are two paths, both are like 75, the highest, uh, Du uh, duration in, in the timeline or in the activity. And apart from that, they both are having the float zero. Then what to do? Then you have to pick both of them as the critical path. But think of it, the situation is so difficult there for you because you have to intensely focus on two paths in a program always because there are two critical paths and probably they can have a dependency on one another as well. Okay, so it is difficult and that's why the risk will be pretty high. It, it's very clear that the multiple you know, critical paths can exist. However, that will mean that the risk will increase in the project because the more elements you add of critical path, it means that uh, the more, uh, you know, zero float is there. That means no, no uh, you know, padding is there, no buffer is there. And if any mishap happens, uh, your critical path, uh, like path uh, will, directly impact the day one of the project. So it is not at all a good sign to have more than one critical path. If there is one, like more than one, it's always adding higher risk to the project. You have to maintain it more nicely because you have to intensely focus uh, both the critical paths together. However, from the exam point of view, yes, this question can be asked, but um, Again, like I said, you know, you know, personally, I have not seen like two critical paths are being shared on a diagram. Okay, and let's wrap up the session now. So we know that the critical path has zero total float. 
Okay, fantastic. We also know the definition of the critical path and probably now we understand what the definition means. It's not the literal meaning of the word critical. It means that longest duration path in a project and determines the shortest time it could take to complete the project, right? Which means the longest duration, the sum value of the durations of the activities that is the longest value or the largest value rather. And the shortest time here is the zero float. Multiple critical paths can exist. However, that means the risk will increase in the project. Because like I said, it is it, it takes a good amount of time for a program manager to uh, focus on a critical path component. There, there may be like 20 components on the critical path, right? And then if you add one more critical path in the same program or in the same project, how difficult it is because now you have to probably 20 plus 20 more items you have to manage because none of the items are having any buffer, which means the project has got very strict timelines, right? Okay, with that, we came to the end of lesson 10. I hope you enjoyed it, you liked it. I wish you all a great day and a great time. Thank you for watching.